Now, just before you sit down, give the Lord a really big clap of praise. Celebrate Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then you may please be seated. Glory be to God. We thank God for His faithfulness. And I want to especially thank God for how He had helped us uh, from Friday, and yesterday, and today. The Lord took control of everything. Come on, give the Lord a big hand. Thank God. We thank God. We can't thank him enough. So I welcome uh, the families of, um, I, I think it's safer to say Mama Lady Jobi. Glory be to God. Let's give the Lord a big hand. <laughs> we give God all the glory. The Lord will stand by you. We will strengthen you in Jesus' name. So during the Thanksgiving service, the family will be giving thanks to God. Our theme for the month of November is the final saying. The final saying. And this morning I will speak straight on the theme and it will be part one of the final saying. The final say, part one. Our text will be from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 23, from verse 11 all the way to verse 14. And I know many people have joined us virtually. It will be a good thing to thank God on their behalf as we give the Lord a big hand for the virtual church. We welcome you, brethren. Acts 23, 11 to 14. And the night following, the Lord stood by him and said, Be of good cheer, Paul, for as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, so must thou be a witness also at Rome. Verse 11, and the night following, the Lord stood by him, oh, that's verse 11, verse 12, All right, verse 12, and when it was day, certain of the Jews banded together and bound themselves under a curse, saying that they would neither eat nor drink till they had killed Paul. And there were more than 40 which had made this conspiracy. And they came to the chief priest and elders and said, we have bound ourselves under a great curse that we eat nothing until we have slain Paul. The planet Earth and the inhabitants are under serious attacks. No nation is left out and no race is spared. The nature of the attacks may be different, but fear, pains, lack, sorrow, sickness, and death are common denominator. Almost everywhere you turn, from America to Africa, Europe to Asia, Middle East to Far East, and indeed the entire globe is melting down under various, various fires. I mean, only, I think it was last week that a 21 story building collapsed in Nigeria. And the last time I followed the news, about 36 people, you know, had died. Now, almost everywhere you turn, including America, that I know nothing is truly certain anymore. Revelation 12, verse 12. Revelation 12, verse 12 says, Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who live in the heavens rejoice. But terror will come on the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you in great anger, knowing that he has little time. The realities of these scriptures are beginning to unfold today all around the world. And in the midst of this chaos going on, trouble going on around the world, there are too many voices speaking to the same issues, but pointing to different directions, and many are wondering the voice to believe. All the voices speaking to the different issues can be categorized into three. The voice of man, the voice of the devil, and the voice of God. The voice of the devil you don't recognize quickly because there is no devil really standing in front of you. Except that as we are preparing for that procedure that kills somebody else, something comes to, your, <laughs> to you that you can't see and say, oh, isn't it tomorrow you are going for that procedure? You remember how that other fellow passed on? <laughs> Get ready now. You better call your insurance company. And then you are there listening and say, is it true? And fear, you know, grips you as an individual. Acts 23, verse 11, that we read, the Bible said, And the night following, the Lord stood by Paul, by him, and said, Be of good cheer, Paul, for as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, so must thou be a witness also at Rome. 
the voice of God. And right immediately after, in verse 12, Acts 23, 12, and when it was day, certain of the Jews banded together and bound themselves under a cross, saying that they would neither eat nor drink till they had killed Paul. And there were more than 40 which had made this conspiracy. Voice of men. Men can walk in conjunction with the devil, and men can walk in conjunction with God. True man or men, you can hear the devil speaking, and true men, you can hear God speaking. It's important for us to be careful about certain things that I will share very briefly. God said to Paul, you will preach in Rome. And at the same time, men said to Paul, he must die immediately. Now, if you don't know who has the final say, if you don't know which voice to believe, we can live our lives in fear all the time because there are too many voices, too many speaking. In these days and times, we hear conflicting but compelling voices pointing to different verdicts. And many are confused on who or what to believe. Well, you are the last born in that family. And the first four, they, they got divorced. And now you want to get married. I say, how, how are you different from your sisters? Of course, you can get married. Why are you wasting your time? You want to get married. Okay. You know how it's going to end. Well, that's the way it's always ended in your family. Now, if you do nothing about that voice, it becomes a stronghold very quickly. In all the madness and the craziness of events around the world, four things become very crucial. I'll go over them and I'll be done very soon. Number one, watch whose words you listen to. Number two, watch who, whose words you take seriously. Number three, know who has the final say. Number four, know what to do to align with the one who has the final say. Number one, watch whose words you listen to. Let's begin from there. If you listen more to the words of politicians, governments, rulers, journalists, <laughs> and men in general, you are bound to be misled. In recession and crisis, there is no word of comfort from man. Haven't you wondered? Have you not wondered how CNN and Fox reporting on the same story but concluding in the opposite direction? Government all over the world are confused for the most part. What can we do without doctors? Oh, I thank God for the wisdom given to doctors. Oh, the lawyers, the attorneys, the pilots, wonderful people. But doctors, attorneys, pilots, and professionals that are trained to profound solutions are in so much crisis themselves now that many of, the, many of them can multiply the problems of the client. The doctor who is to help the sick is now seriously depressed, clinically. I mean, you, you can read the news. I try to follow these things. There are many doctors and nurses, medical practitioners, because of what they have seen in the last two, three years, themselves are suffering mental health issues. I'm not saying all of them, but a good number of them. And most of the time, you don't know the condition of the doctor talking to you. Now, if your doctor has a mental health condition, <laughs> God have mercy. But do you know that pilots are not uh, different? Pilots are also suffering mental health challenges. God forbid that the pilot to fly you is having mental health issues. And he says, put on your belt, you put the tail on. The anger of the attorney, the lawyer, sets the tone for our counsel. My wife and I were talking to, you know, an attorney, family lawyer, I think she was. I mean, you could see she was so angry. And she said, look, that she was, she's divorced because this, my husband tortured me and, you know, treated me so badly. I made up my mind, my practice, I will send many Nigerian men to, to jail. 
So any woman that shows up to complain about the husband, don't worry. He's going to go to jail. I will make sure he goes to jail. So she was going to send somebody to jail who used to be in our church then. And I think I, you know, we had one, the sister who came and said, be careful. But anyway, they got married and the brother, oh man, he was, he was bad. So this attorney called me and said, Pastor Badra, I've not met you before, but I've heard about you, that you're very fair and objective. I'm about to send somebody to jail in your church. Now, <laughs> if you come quickly to my office, maybe we can do something. I said, who is the person? He said, I won't tell you. So my wife and I got there. Well, I, I could guess because we're much smaller those days, so I knew <laughs> almost everybody. So I saw the lady. Oh, it was bad. She had been in the shelter. Six months prior, actually two years prior, we had told her that we could put you in the hotel for six months. Don't go in with this guy. Even us, we don't know him well. Say no, we did traditional in Nigeria already. You say, did he come? He said no. He, his picture was standing for him. <laughs> I just to give you the background to the story. But I think the point I'm making is this lawyer who was to be professional said, I will send him to jail. I'm divorced, she said. And I want to send many Nigerian men in particular to jail to take the pound of flesh that my my husband gave to me. My point is, people are talking to you based on their emotional state. And she tried because at least she got the sister green card because this, this funny brother brought this, this fellow from Nigeria, dumped her, wasn't going to file for, for him, for her rather. I said, Pastor, the reason I call you is I tell this man, the filing begins now, otherwise he will go to jail. And she had proof and evidences because the lady wasn't that stupid. He had, he had recorded some of the things. He said, bro, I've been telling you this thing. So you see yourself now? Will you feel the things I will feel? So I feel the thing. <laughs> Say, give me the check for the filing, whatever. Wrote the check. Gave the check out. See, people don't <laughs> listen to pastors until there is real fire. Well, at least that was the only thing. The lady got out of the marriage, maybe two children. Right? That's a good thing as well. But the marriage ended in divorce anyway. The pilot flying may be suffering from mental health. You must, even, you must watch the pastor you listen to. Because even pastors are not <laughs> exempted. There are pastors going through mental health issues. Or all kind of challenges. Or they are just selfish. You see how confused many pastors were during the ele presidential election. And some said, God said, Trump will win. Another said, and some others said, no, Biden will win. And God speaking to the two of them. Watch whose words or voice you listen to. And that's why I'm very concerned when people jump from this place to that place, from one website to another website. Be careful. Number two. Watch whose voice or words you take seriously. Because in the world that we are in, sometimes even when you don't want to hear, <laughs> you are, somehow you, you are not deaf. Somebody go, have you heard what happened? You can't run away say, I don't want to hear. Sometimes you hear, of course you can run in some cases. If the fellow is a tail bearer of woes and doom, from distance you just go this way, say, it's coming again because she doesn't have anything good to say. But many of the occasions, you just turn on TV innocently. Then you hear some things. Now, of all the things you hear, watch the one you take seriously. If you take seriously the words of politicians, governments, rulers, and men in general, you are bound to live in fear. Oh, some years ago, I think it was the Economist, and I respect them for many things, but they prophesied by 2015, there will be no country called Nigeria again. And because they were experts, some took them very seriously. I think we should appreciate God that there is still a country called Nigeria in 2021. <laughs> and I know there are challenges, but I'm only saying that be careful whose words you take seriously.
Don't let any man scare you out of God's plan for your life. And don't let any man drain your passion. One of the reasons I just want to serve God and give him everything is when I was growing up as a little boy, I mean, even my parents were not so sure that I will live, <laughs> live long. Because every, you know, those people that wear red, white robe, some of them red, they have a bed like that, and then they have long stick. Each time they pass through our house, one must branch. Who is the father of this boy? Who is the mother of this boy? Seven days, seven days, seven days, seven days, seven days, seven days, seven days. The guy will be shaking. Even me as a boy, just looking at him. <laughs> oh, they took me every day. Oh. That's why I hate the devil so terribly. Oh, I must, I must go to the hospital at least once a month. There's one hospital called Oluyoro, I mean... They, they, there was hardly any space left that they have not put injection because malaria those days everything is is needle they poke it. it was bad that when I saw nurses coming in our neighborhood I ran away but I thought they were coming for me but January 2nd I'm going to be 56 I think yeah <laughs> give the Lord a big hand and there are many more years ahead in the mighty name of Jesus don't let anyone scare life out of you. That's what I'm saying. In 1 Samuel 17, verse 33, and Saul said to David, 1 Samuel 17, 33, and Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. David, forget it. This man will waste your life. In verse 32, 1 Samuel 17, 32. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Oh, there are many, many reports going on about different individuals. Let's be careful, the one you take seriously. Because usually what you believe and take seriously and you are expecting usually come to pass. And that's why if somebody says to you, you're not going to make it in this land because your accent is terrible, don't take them seriously. Just tell them, check out the Indians, and I love them. Many of them are your doctors. You better listen very well to what you say. People don't make it because of accent or, or otherwise. They don't make it because they are tall or short. They make it because God decree. Can I hear your amen? Don't let anyone limit you when you have the unlimited God on your side. So Acts 23 verse 14, where we read, And they came to the chief priests and elders and said, We have bound ourselves under a, a great curse that we eat nothing until we have slain Paul. That should cause some panic, right? But that wasn't Paul. Paul heard from the Lord. Which takes me to point number three. Or maybe before then. The man who threatens to squeeze you may be thrown out soon. And the man threatening to fire you may soon be under fire. Why should you be afraid? One of the times in my, my career, there's one particular manager. For some reason, just couldn't you know, take my, my progress and so he will tell someone that, you know, that today I will squeeze him. And people will come and tell, what, what have you done to that guy? He said, he will squeeze you. He said, don't worry. <laughs> because it was the, you know, um, he had a responsibility where he could audit any department. He would just show up in my, in my office on Monday and my group and said, I'm going to be having an audit of your system, of your team today. So looking for something to find. So one particular December, I always remember this story in December, he got to the height. I said, I think I've been looking at this man for too much, for too long. I didn't even pray long. I just said, Lord, you know, every tree that my father had not planted shall be uprooted. By the time I, we return in January, January 4th, he has been transferred out of Nigeria. This man couldn't stand cold. They sent him to Calgary. His salary... 
he was having what we call he had geographical coefficients. If we have a work in Africa, let's say your salary was to be ten thousand, it would be sixteen thousand, and you hardly spend the money if you're, if you're expatriate. And they moved him to Kagari, which is one to one. I mean, there's no nothing extra. He was there for years. For some of my friends, we jokingly asked me, "When are you going to release him?" People planning to squeeze life out of you, they will soon be thrown out. In the mighty name of Jesus. Final say. So one of our sisters, one day with the husband, after service, pulled me to the corner that my boss is making life difficult for me. Ah, I remember this story. I said, I remember also one man making life difficult for me. So I pulled them to the side. We held our hands. And I prayed the same prayer. Every tree that my father had not planted must be rooted out. She got to the office the following week. And um, the termination letter of the boss tormenting her was ready. Now, the person who should have delivered the letter wasn't available. So they called her that you deliver the termination letter of your tormentor. Those that are tormenting you will soon be fired. Because they don't have the final say. I mean, she shared her testimony by herself here. During the Holy Ghost service last Friday, our Father and God General of us here said two, two prophecies that I wanted to take very seriously. I believe the two definitely are for me. But if it's for you too, then when I read it, say amen. Say, it does not matter what the enemy may try, I will reach the top. Amen. Ah, I think the people to my right, are very, they know how to say good amen. What about you here? The second prophecy says, I'm going to climb higher and faster than my boss can ever expect. Amen. And I will be so in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Listen, the opposition may be formidable. The diagnosis may be scary. The depth may be heavy. And the facts may be real. The truth is that until you hear the final say, you must neither be perturbed or perplexed. And I know sometimes it's hard. One of our brothers years back called me in the afternoon and said, Pastor, I just left the doctor's office and they confirmed that he, he had stage three ca colon cancer. At that time, I didn't know what right, stage one, two, three, four, you know, I don't. So I said, oh, stage three, all right? So what's the progression? What, which one is it? He said, four is the highest. I said, ah. And we went to the house and we began to pray. But one thing I love about this brother is throughout the time of the prayers and treatment, you will never know, except he had told you, was at the duty post, was, was smiling, was, you know, as if nothing was going on. On his birthday, December 19, that particular year, it's been a while now, he became cancer free. I remember his birthday because of this testimony. Go ahead, let's give the Lord a big hand. Now, there are people, and I'm not saying those news are not scary. I'm only saying, be careful how seriously you take it, because it can begin to manifest. I mean, someone will share the testimony with us. You know, he had not been diagnosed of anything. It's just that the patient that he treated, you know, had COVID-19. I think the following day after the treatment. And the devil said, you see yourself? You have it already. And according to him, right there and then, the symptoms of COVID-19 began to, to manifest immediately. I, I mean, all the symptoms. So the wife wanted to stay in the room with him. He said, no, 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 go, 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 go. Don't go and sleep somewhere else. I can feel. So what do you mean? You can't send me out. Even if you have it, then let's have it together. The wife said, I'm not going anywhere. But the following day, I believe it was, went to do the test and was free. I've told you before, we, we won the green card and you have to go to the hospital and make the arrangement uh, for medical and all that. And I think about two weeks before, I had a tooth extraction. Oh my God. The nurse, the finger was everywhere in my mouth. I mean, oh, he was terrible. Even my hygiene was horrible. Anyway. So they did the physical and pull all the things, drew, they drew the blood and said, come in the afternoon for the rest of the result. We got there, they said, some of you sit to the left, some of you sit to the right. 
And one man just had a brainwave and said, well, they already told me that people on the left are those that are HIV positive. And people on the right are negative. My wife and I were on the, on the, on the, on the left side. And I, I began to hear the enemy speaking to me. You see, you got it first. You gave it to your wife. Said, How? Ah, you forgot you did tooth extraction. That nurse had HIV, put it in your mouth. And since you have met with your wife since then, that's how she got it. My blood pressure started rising. I started thinking, oh, this is how the hand will come. We won't even get to America before. <laughs> and everyone coming out of the doctor's office from our group, they were already smiling, you see? You see? By the time I got to the doctor's office and they put that thing on my whatever, my blood pressure went like the pastor. The doctor said, hey, calm down, calm down. I said, the HIV test, HIV. The man said, what about it? He said, said, no, you are, not, you are negative HIV. It took a long time for my blood pressure to come down. <laughs> whatever you take seriously can find manifestation. You cannot make a move when the instruction contradicts the final say and you cannot stay when you know you demand the demand is for you to move number three so i can close quickly know who has the final say that's very important lamentation 337 as i share a few scriptures with you who is he that said it said and he commit to pass when the law commanded it not Lamentation 3, 37 from NIV. Who can speak and have it happen if the Lord has not decreed it? From NLT, who can command things to happen without the Lord's permission? From the English Standard Version, who has spoken and it came to pass unless the Lord has commanded it? Numbers 23, 19. Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Had he said it, shall he not do it? Or had he spoken and shall he not make it good? Brethren, the Almighty God has the final say. He's the only one who knows who will live and who will die. Psalm 33, from verse 8 to 11, verses 8 to 11, let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spake and it was done. He commanded and is too fast. The Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. He maketh the devices of the people of none effect. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever. Uh, the thoughts of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. Daniel 4.35. Daniel 4.35. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. And he dwelt according to his will in the army of heaven. And among the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stay his hand and say unto him, What doest thou? The powers that be may all vote against, against your existence. Still the Lord has the final say. We were at the city 15, 16 years ago. And the council, we had a little tiny building, 2,000 square footage, right in the front there. The rest was jungle. Bush everywhere, trees and shrubs. And they said, what do you want to do? They said, a church, you want to start a church? Say, how many are you? I said, six of us. Ah, how many acres do you have? I said, six acres. So, you want to share one acre per person? Oh, they loved us to scorn and they called to vote. And eight out of nine said we couldn't start a church here. One was neutral. He didn't vote yes or no. But God had spoken to a 72-year-old man that I met when we bought this land who called me and said, can you confirm to me that a church has bought this place? I said, yes, but why are you asking? Oh, he said, I was born and raised here. And God told me many years ago that a church will be coming here. And people had bought this land, but a church. I started asking God, now I'm 72 years old, when will the church come? And the Lord said, the church is around the corner. So I started coming once a week to check. So when they both said no, I know they must be joking. That can't be the final say, because God already spoke. That's why we are here 16 years, almost 16 years after. Deportation letter does not always result in deportation. Why? Because the Lord has the final say. Medical diagnosis is a diagnosis. The meaning rests with the experts, but the final say belongs to God. 
Death certificate does not always mean death <laughs> because the Lord has the final say. One of the pastors that visited us not long ago shared the story with us, a little, very young then, and then sneezed and something happened and dead. Pastor Ebuna was there when she was sharing the testimony. So the parents said, oh my God, and they were going to, you know, go and bury her. Yes. And then somebody said, hey, don't go and bury her like that. You have to take death certificate from the hospital. So that at least they can say you have certificate, death certificate. So he's dead. What difference does he make? Anyway, the parents listened. And they were going to the hospital. They got to the gate of the hospital. She sneezed back to life. She would have been buried. Come on, if you are clapping for the Lord, go ahead and give the Lord a clap often. The superpowers of yesterday wouldn't have believed their extinction today. Babylonian Empire, Persian Empire, Roman Empire, the Soviet Union, the Greek, etc. They are all falling, never to rise again. Why? The Lord has got the final say. The abandoned wife in your swimming days may be the anchor needed in your drowning days. The Lord has the final say. The thief may be in paradise and the disciple may be in hell. The Lord has the final say. The prisoner may become the prime minister. Why? The Lord has the final say. The senior may become the junior and the junior may become the senior. Why? Because the Lord has the final say. The Supreme Court shall overturn the appeal court, but the Most High shall overturn the Supreme Court. Let me close. For Paul, there was this conspiracy. God has spoken that you preached in Jerusalem, you will preach in Rome. And more than 40 men came together, said, we will not eat anything, we will not drink anything, until we kill Paul. We will see how we get to Rome. But you know who has the final say. You already spoke. Paul got to Rome. I believe those people died of starvation because they took an oath under a curse that they will eat nothing and drink nothing until they keep Paul. They thought it would be for two days. But 30 days, Paul was still living. One month, one year. I don't know how long they lasted but they died of starvation. Everyone waiting for your death. Long before they are gone, you will still be here. Let me ask you a question before you stand up. Who has the final say? Say it loud and clear. Who has the final say? As I ask one more time. Who has the final say? Finally, know what to do to align with the one who has the final say. One thing that is most important is that the one with the final say deserves the ultimate praise. And let everything you do bring praise to him. Progressively increasing praise secures perpetual triumphant strides in the journey of life. To deny the most high the highest praise is to be denied the most needed miracle. This morning is Thanksgiving. This morning we want to praise him. To silence other voices, you must raise your voice ceaselessly in praise and prayers to God who has the final say. These are the secrets of Apostle Paul. As he said, my final scripture in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, 17, 18. He said, rejoice evermore. 17, pray without season. In everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Hold on to the promise of God till the 11th hour. For God specializes in the eleventh hour miracles. One more time as you rise now. Who has the final say? Who has the final say? Jehovah has the final say. Who has the final say? Jehovah has the final say. Jehovah turns my life around. Jehovah turns my life around. He makes a way where there is no way. Jehovah has the final say. Now lift your hands and thank him, the one who has the final say. When we learn to thank him, 
then we are sure to bring to pass his promises concerning us. Father, we thank you for you have the final say. Oh, the devil doesn't have the final say. No man has the final say over your life. Only the almighty God, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Only him has the final say. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We have three prayer points to pray, and I want you to pray with everything you have. We thank God. We still want to thank him more. But let's pray these three prayer points. Remember, when praise is combined with prayers, you can be sure of the miraculous. Lift your right hand to heaven and say, Father, overturn every contrary pronouncement against my life and destiny in the name of Jesus. Overturn, overturn it. Overturn every contrary pronouncement against my life and destiny in the name of Jesus. Overturn every contrary, every contrary pronouncement, every pronouncement contrary to your promise, contrary to all that you have said to me. Lord, let it be overturned. Let it be overturned. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Number two, say, Father, I release your word of life to cancel every pronouncement of death in my life and family in the name of Jesus. Father, I release your word, your word of life to cancel every pronouncement of death in my life and family in the name of Jesus. Father, I release your word of life to cancel every pronouncement of death in my life and my family, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Say, Father, you have the final say. Please speak in my favor. In the name of Jesus, you have the final say. Please speak in my favor. Please speak in my favor. My Lord and my God, please speak in my favor. Please speak in my favor. You have the final say over every situation. Therefore, please speak. Speak in my favor. My Lord and my God, please speak in my favor. Speak in my favor. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. So our Father and our God, we just want to bless your holy name. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word. Father, we pray. That in all of our lives, every pronouncement of death, let it be reversed down by the word of life. In the mighty name of Jesus. You have the final say. Therefore, speak in our favor. In the mighty name of Jesus. All your promises for our lives, bring them all to pass, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Long after all the enemies are gone, May we still be here rejoicing and celebrating the goodness of the Lord in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Frustrate the conspiracy of the enemy. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Jesus' name, we have prayed. Now, if you listen to this message and you are now saved, I told them in the first service, you draw near to God, God draws near to you. James 4, verse 8. We all need God by our side if what he has promised must come to pass. That's why I welcome you to please give your life to Jesus this morning. Or you are virtual. It's very simple to do. Just believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus is the Lord and Savior of mankind. Recognize his sacrifice at Calvary, the shedding of his blood for the remission of our sins. And make the confession and say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Lord and Savior. Please save my soul. Now, if it's as simple as that, if you do that, then I can assure you that Christ is coming to you. And I therefore pray for you, as many as have made that decision now, that the Almighty God will uphold you to the very end. And all these good promises for your life will begin to find reality in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for all your children making decision to come to you, Lord, save their souls. And for every one of us, the rest of this year, we'll wake up in joy and go to bed in joy. 
It will be celebration galore all the way in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In our homes, no more sorrow, no more shame, no more reproach. Thank you, Father, for answers to our prayers. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. If you receive your own, go ahead and give the Lord a big hand of praise, celebrating.